Okay, so uh, in today's class, I'll be talking about the BAP 8B, okay, which I already shared with you, uh, the hutang lapo, hutang lapo tepule, and pountukan hutang ragu. All right, but before we go there, let's look back to your BAP 8A uh, file, okay? And let's finish up the last two questions, the question six and question seven. So once we finish with this one, then we will straight enter to Bob 8B. Okay, so if you guys still remember the Bob 8A uh, or the Belum Terima, Belum Baya, do you still remember or not? If yes, give me an R in the chat box for remember. Just to see if you still remember. Okay, so if you don't remember, then what are you gonna do? You have to study back, right? Easy. So, but now let's do another two questions together and then we will close up this subtopic. Okay, so let's look at question six and then. Um, open an account commission determiner and also account saver determiner. So as you can see here, the there is a commission volume tepo ole, commission uh, and also saver volume tepo ole. Okay, on the baki awal and baki akhir, and this is the buku tonight that is given. All right, so now you have to book a account commission determiner. Account commission D term. All right, twenty twenty one. Okay, so let's start with the commission first. So when they say commission D term, so now our focus will be all the commission here. So how are we gonna record this one? So first thing first. Your commission belum terpole. Belum terpole is what I read to you is a liability. Right? Everyone type L in the chat box for liability. Type L. L is stand for liability. So your belum terpole, commission belum terpole is a liability. And if it is a liability, then it will be on the credit side because of your Abalim. Okay, your liability is on the credit side. So here on January 1st, so I told you, you can put Baki BB. Okay, if you don't want, you can put commission belum the pole. Either one. All right, but I love to use this one. Easier. Okay, Baki BB. And how much? 360. So you put 360. Let's give a one, two lines. And then you put a one line double line. And what do we got now? We got a commission volume to put for the Baki RQ. And since this is a lively, then it will be on the credit side as well for your Baki BB at year end. So here, 2022, January, next year, all right? So January. One Baki BB will be 280. So when there is a 280 Baki BB for 2022 January 1st, so you have to shift one day backward to December 31st, your Baki HB. So if this is 280, this must be 280 also. All right, HB and BB. The figure must be the same, 280, 280. All right, so this one, done, done. Okay, now look at your book tonight. Look at the commission determiner. So why is it on the debit side of your book tonight? Because money comes in. All right, so when money comes in, you have the debit book tonight. Your bank, 
Okay, so if you already debited your bank for your commission determiner, so in your account commission determiner, you have to credit. This is accounting debit and credit. So here you have to write from where? For bank, okay, to bank. So bank 2240. Is it? So this one also recorded. So now, how do you do this? Just add up the Joomla 2600. And then this figure will be the Joomla minus the 280, 2320. So actually, So 2320, this is your, you send to your account untung rugi. Because this is the actual commission determiner for this uh, December 31st, 2021. Right? Are you guys clear? If yes, you give me a C in the chat box if you are clear. Okay, so every time after you've done this one, this empty space must be your account untung rugi. So now we go to B. So you do the same thing, book out the account. Now will be your account, saver, D, the remote. Okay, so same thing is a balloon to put so volume to is a liability. So therefore, it's in the credit side here. So you use the same way actually. So you just um January 1, Pakiawa is on January 1st, 1800. This will be our Baki Bila. All right. Then your 2700. So this will be your Baki Ahil. And your bucket are here will be in the credit side also because it is a liability. So here. So bucky BB. So 2700. So when there is a bucky BB, there must be a HB. It must be like that. Huh? It cannot go up here, HB. If the figure is here, you put here. If the BB is here, your HB will be here. All right. So BB. HP. All right. And then yes, after this is done already, ma. Okay, so look for the other saver. So this saver did remember. You already debit your bank for 11700 So after you debit, credit, lah, right? You credit your saver determiner here. Bank. 11700 so with that being said, after that, Jumla. So this one minus 2,700. So this will be your saver determiner yang sebena. Remember I told you? So yang sebena punya, we send to account untung rugi. Is it? It's the last date of the year. December 31st. Right, do you guys understand B? If yes, you give me a B in the chat box. If you understand B, give me a B in the chat box. Right, 
So this is question six. All right, so this is a very simple question. Now, let's go on to seven. So seven, you get, you got more stuff here. All right, so let's do question seven. So you got Benjamin Prabaya, Promosi, blah, blah, Awal, Aki, Sepanjang, Penerima dan Pembantuan. So this will be like your account bank, right? Your account bank. Okay, but then, of course, Penerimaan is a debit side of your bank. Okay, so you need to the balik, right? Okay, but make sure you, you, you are clear for this part. All right, so this is the buyer part, meaning you pay. When you pay, means your money goes out. This is the penerima un part, okay? So meaning your money comes in. This is out. Okay, so first, account belanjaan. So let's do account belanjaan. Okay, so you just use the same method that I taught you here for this question and apply in here. Account belanja arm. Okay, okay. So let's see. Account belanja arm. So you look for the account belanja arm punya and you do. All the account belanja arm punya informasi. So first one, belanja arm prabaya to you. Prabaya is an asset. Okay. Hasil, there are two mah. Okay, hasil can either be hasil belum terima or hasil belum terpoleh. Wow, belanja, you have to also. Belanja belum bayar. And also belanja prabaya. Okay, very simple. Now, you just have to know one of this. So let's say if you know balloon terima is an asset, just like your account balloon terima is an asset. So if hasil balloon terima is an asset, then balloon terpole will be the opposite, which is a liability. Is that not? So if hasil balloon terima is an asset, then belanja yang belum bayar, same, terima is asset, belum bayar is a Liability lah, right? If belanja belum bayar is a liability, then another one belanja prabaya will be the opposite of liability. It is a set. Is it? That's why a belanja am prabaya is a belanja prabaya. So it is a asset. So if it is a set based on your abalim, your asset is in a debit set. Therefore, I have to debit it. Are you clear? If yes, you give me an A in the chat box. So this is how you do for all this question. Very simple. Once you get what it means for the abali and also balum terima, balum terpoli, all this asset liability, then no problem. All right. So penjaman prabaya asset. So debit. So debit here lah. Okay. So based on January first, your baki bb. Sixty four ringgit. Okay, so we just focus on the jump first. Okay, so you same thing. You skip like two to three lines. Okay, or one two lines, and then this one. All right, one three six. So same is prabaya. Therefore, your one three six will be in the debit side also after the one line double line. So. TPB one three six and three six put here. So when there's a BB, there must be a HB one three six. Okay, bam, bam. Okay, then your belanja arm here under the bank. So you can you see you buy ah, you pay five hundred thirty for your belanja arm. So, jika you buy, ah, maksud you credit your bank. So, if you readjust this, the account bank should be like that.
All right? So credit meaning here lah. So you here you write belanja ah. Uh, five thirty, five hundred thirty ringgit. All right. So here you credit your bank. So in your belanja arm, you have to debit. Bank. 530. See, so here, we Yeah, so after that, you got your Bucky, BB, Bucky, HB, and also your bank. Now you can add up. 594, 594. So this one will be 594 minus 136. We get four, five, eight. So this one will be your belanja arm yang sebenar. So if it is a belanja arm yang sebenar, you record into your account untung rugi. So there you go for your account belanja. Arm. All right. Then next, B. Okay, so B is your account promosi. So you write account promosi. One line, then middle, one line in the middle. Year, ringgit, year, ringgit. Okay, so now all the belanja I'm done idea. Okay, now look at promosi. So you circle all the promosi. Promosi belum bayar, promosi prabaya, and promosi. Okay, so you can see that this one is a bit more okay in a promosi you see this one there is a balloon buyer and promosi pra buyer okay let's go one by one let's look at first january first okay january first okay promosi balloon buyer i already told you what balloon buyer is a liability so a liability is in the credit side okay so let's record for promosi balloon buyer so on the credit side here january one Baki BB. So how much is it? 240 ringgit. Okay, cool. All right. But then do we have promosi pra buyer on 1st January 2021? The answer is no. So therefore, you don't have to record this one. Okay, and pra buyer is a asset. Asset is in the debit side. All right. Okay, so this part I already done. Okay, what about the Baki BB, the 31st December? So for 31st December, is there balloon buyer? No. So therefore, we don't have to record for the balloon buyer on 31st. But we have a pra buyer on the 31st. And pra buyer is an asset. Asset means on the, uh, on the debit side. So after the one line, double line, here. Agree? So because debit side, ma. So, is it asset ma? Okay. So January first, lucky BB. All right. So this four hundred eighty. So when there is a baki BB, I told you there must be a HP on top. Okay. Same figure four hundred eighty ringgit. So there you go. After you done the upper part, you go to your bank and look for your promosi. So you can see your promosi is in the pembayan. Pembayan on the account bank means credit here. So actually something like that. In your actual ledger, you credit your bank here, you write promosi one, two, four, zero. So if you credit your bank, then in your account promosi, you should what? Debit. So here put bank. This is um one two four zero okay so you can see you compare which side is bigger the figure of course it's one two four zero so you put in the jumla jumla one two four zero okay so there's an empty we need to get this figure okay one two four oh minus two four zero minus four eight zero you'll get 
520. So this 520 will be your promo C Serbana. And this promo C Serbana will be sent to our account Untong Rugi. That's why in my nota here, you see, not all the Belanja Serbana, all the Hasu Serbana is always going into your AUK. What is AUK? Actually, what I mean is account untung rugi. Is it? So you send to the account untung rugi. Okay, so continue. So that's all for B. Now we go to C. So you can see it's the same concept being used again and again and again. All right, that's why I teach you the concept. I don't ask you to memorize. I ask you to learn, to understand the concept. So you just use this concept, then you can get full mark for this question. Same thing. Draw the account T and start with the title, account saver D, the rimmer. So saver D, the rimmer. Look for all the saver, 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 and saver. All right. So there is a saver balloon tepole for Baki Awal. Right. Balloon tepole is a liability. I don't have to repeat again, right? So liability, liability on the okay, side. Four, four, zero. Okay, do we have several balloon terima on the Baki Awam? No, so we can uh, ignore that. Okay, then you see a few line, one line, double line, the jumla. And see, oh, there is a several balloon terima 880, and balloon terima is the asset, asset will be in the debit side here. So, Baki BB, you bring it up. B bring up to a HP. Eight, eight, zero. So done, done. Okay, so now you go to your account bank. Look for your saver determiner. So saver determiner is under the penerimaan. So when you menerima, you are debiting your account because money comes in. Lah. Right, so it's something like this. Seva di terima. Three, nine, six, zero. So if you debit, can you see not? You're actually debiting your bank. So if you debit your bank under your Seva di terima, you have to credit it because I told you many times when you debit an account, you have to credit the other account. It can never be debit, debit. It must be debit, credit, debit, credit. Sorry, debit here. So now I have to credit this account. So um, this will be bank. How much? 3960. Okay. So after that, there's nothing here. Definitely here is very big. All right. So you add up all this figure, put it to here, 5280. And then this figure goes to the Jumla, okay. So December 31st. So this will be our saver determinant yang sebena and it will send to your yes account already. So here we got this. So now we go to donkey, the commission. Same thing again. So account, commission, D, the rima. Okay. Account commission D terima. So look for all the commission. So we got commission belum terpole. So belum terpole is a credit because it is a liability. So credit side here. 
for the January 1st for your Baki Awal, Baki BB. 330 ringgit. So after that, there is a 510 for your Bulim Tepole for the Baki Ahil. So one line, double line. Then on the credit side. Five hundred and ten. So when there is a five hundred and ten BB, there must be a HB five hundred and ten also. So you can see there is a certain pattern of doing this kind of question. It's the same pattern. Okay. So this one three three zero five hundred and ten use. So now you go to your account bank, look for your commission detarima, and it is in the penerimaan. All right, you have to see carefully. So penerima means you terima sewa. Oh, sorry, you terima commission. When you terima, you money comes in, so you have to debit your bank. So it's here commission detarima. All right, four six zero. So here, can you see or not? You're actually debiting your bank. So if you debit your bank, you have to credit your commission to Terima. Then put bank. 460. So, this size is bigger. Very obvious. 790. 790 ringgit. So here will be 790 minus 410. This 280 will be your commission diterima yang sebenar and you have to send to your account. Untung. You see? Very simple. So that's, there you go for your account. Belanja arm. Account promosi, account sewa diterima, account commission diterima. Alright, so whenever we look at this Baki BB at the year end, the Baki Ahil, so we can tell that there is a Berlanja arm asset, Prabaya. Okay, account promosi, is it not? This is on the debit side, so this is asset, so promosi. Prabaya, correct or not? So, kita have perancangan Prabaya, promosi, Prabaya. So, when you look at sewa diterima, it's on the debit side again. So, this is a has a, a asset. So, asset for sewa diterima for hasil is sewa belum terima, correct or not? Sewa belum terima, yes. And lastly, your commission diterima. When this commission determinant is on the credit side, the Baki BB, the Baki Ahil. So for a hasil, and it must be a liability, it means that this is a commission yang belum terpole 510. Belum terpole 510. Okay, so we have done A, B, C, D. Now look at E. How do we record for question E? Okay, we've done before already. How do we put it into E? What is E? So how do we put into account untung rugi? Account untung rugi. So let me give you my first explanation. First uh, way of doing this is if you remember how do you how you record the account you know that the balance is on the debit side while the hustle is on the credit side. So with that being said, we know that the balance arm is a balance arm, right? So balance arm will be on the debit side. The promo C is on the debit side because it's a balance. Sewa diterima is a hustle, so it will be on the credit side. Correct not? And then the commission determines also hasil. So, on the credit side, lah, because it is hasil. Commission determines. Okay. But then, you can never take this figure and put in your accounting because this is the amount yang in the bank. Alright? And I told you, apa yang kamu bayar, is not equivalent to apa yang kamu belanja. 
and vice versa. And the same thing goes to apa yang kamu terima, your wang yang ti terima, tak semestinya equals to apa yang kamu uh, dapat for your hasil. It's not just hasil yang sebenar. Para apa yang terima is not the whole hasil. That's why we need to do all this account. You see not? So the the account will jump, and you can see that this whenever you say account, don't forget this four, five, eight. Then it will be your belanja yang sebenar. Alright, so belanja am four, five, eight. So belanja am four, five, eight. Promosi five two zero. Can you see account only five two zero, five two zero. Saver di terima. Don't look at your bank ah. Don't look here. Look at your account only. Five two eight zero. Saver di terima. Five two eight zero. Then your commission di terima. Account only two hundred and eighty. So that's answer. Okay. Then the other way of looking at this account nungi to record this account nungi is by maybe here you can write the whole thing. Bagi tahun ber akhir thirty first December twenty one. Okay. So it's how. This I say. How do we do the other way, the other method? So see or not? In your balance your arm, I already mentioned accounting rugi. Is it account? We are doing it for accounting rugi. Right. So if under balance your arm, I credit, I credit my balance your arm and put accounting rugi on the credit side. So in my accounting rugi. I debit and write back belanja. Can you see the system catatan begu? The double entry debit and credit. Okay, let's test our account promosi. Where is our account nungi? On the credit side of your promosi. Okay, account promosi on the credit side your account nungi. So if I credit my promosi here, credit my promosi. So under my untung nungi, I must debit. And write back. Promosi five two zero. Can you see not? So debit and credit. Okay. What about salary? Do you remember what is my untung rugi on the debit side of my salary? Do you remember? Okay. So if I debit my salary, do you remember? Then under my account untung rugi, I must credit. Can you see not? One is on the left. One is on the right. One is debit, one is credit. Okay, last one, last one. Look at your saver. Uh, sorry, your commission determinant. Where's the account to rugi? Is on the debit side. Gonna so I debit my commission determinant. Then in my account to rugi, here I have to credit my commission determinant, and it is two hundred and eighty. Are you guys clear? If yes, give me a C in the chat box. That's it. Okay, good. Now, last, your F. Do the catatan dalam PKK. Oh, how do we record this? Same thing. Excuse me. Sorry. I give you two ways to to do this. Okay, up to you. But before that, let's do the the key first. So this will be your penyata, kedudukan, kewangan pada first December twenty twenty one. Yeah. Okay, the first way is you must know this 
by heart. Like which one is I said, which one is I believe, which is this one. Uh? Okay, by knowing this four, you can simply tell which one is asset, which one is liability. And you know that in your PKK, the asset semester is here on the debit side, just like our lim, and then the liability on the credit side. Lah. Okay, so see. Your belanja am prabaya because it is a prabaya. And because the PKK is just by the 31st December, therefore we just have to focus on 31st December 2021. The Bagia Q. This one we don't care. All right, so belanja am prabaya 136. There's a belanja am prabaya. Prabaya is an asset. So on the debit side, assess the muscle. Okay, you put. Belanja am Prabaya 136. Okay, promosi belum I think ma. So skip. Promosi Prabaya 480. Prabaya again is a asset. So put promosi Prabaya on the debit side. Asset 480. Okay, done. Sewa belum terpole. Any figure or not? No, so we skip. Sewa belum terima. Ada figure 880. But belum terima is a asset also. So, asset semasa here. Sewa belum terima. Then lastly, commission belum terpole. 510. And belum terpole is a L, a liability. So on a credit side, commission belum the per only 510. Okay, so this is by looking at the information that they gave you and straight away record in your PKK. Okay, but you might be wondering like, how did all this end up here? So now I will show you the technical part of this. I will show you the working, the jalan kerja. Okay, so go back to your account promosi. You just look at your baki here, your baki bibi. Which side is it at? On the debit side. Is it not? So therefore, on the debit side, this one, the account promosi will be in the debit side. Promosi. And what is the promosi that's on the debit side? It must be an asset. Therefore, it is a promosi prabaya. 480. Okay? What about account belanjaam? Belanjaam, can you see now? The baki BB is in the debit side for your belanjaam. So, therefore, your belanja uh, 136. Is it? Is on the debit side, and what is the belanja that is on the debit side? It has to be an asset. And what is the asset of belanja? Belanja am prabaya. Yeah, you add the word prabaya, and it becomes a asset. So what about our C? Save the term. You can see that our baki bb is on the debit side again. Therefore, your save eight hundred eighty is on the debit side also. So what is the save that is on the debit side? The asset. So the asset of save is Sewa belum terima. And lastly, your commission di terima, the Baki BB is on the credit side. Can you see it? So if the Baki BB is on the credit side, then your commission will go into the credit side on, uh, on the liability. And 510, can you see or not? And what is the liability side of commission di terima? The commission belum terpoleh. Are you guys clear for this PKK record. If yes, you give me an F in the chat box, please. All right. So one is your account in Rugi and one is your PKK. All right. And this is 
important. You have to take note of this one. Because after we later after we learn all the polarisation, then we will compute together and then we will do a long question. For a long question, what I mean is you have to do a count per dagangan, a count untung rugi, and PKK. Now, this chart uh, is a whole thing uh, from your jualan to your untung kasa to your untung bersih, and then go to your PKK. You have to record the asset semasa, bukan semasa, liability semasa, then your equity probability. You have to do the whole thing. Okay? And the information that we get will be something similar like this to a long question. All right? Are you guys following? If yes, you give me a one in the chat box again. That one in the chat box. Yeah, following. Okay, good. Okay, now next. Let's share we go into 8B now. Okay, so I tell you. 8B is the hutang lapo, hutang lapo terpule, and hutang ragu. But before that, what is hutang lapo? What are all these things? What is hutang? Okay? You know what is hutang, right? Hutang means debt. Lah. What is that? That is something like borrowing. Right. Okay? So when you say, Jeffrey, hutang kepada... Bob, meaning Jeffrey is owing money to Bob. Okay, right? Or I say, saya hutang awak lima ringgit. Meaning, I have to pay you five ringgit later lah. Alright, so this is a hutang. Something like a liability. Account belum bayar hutang. Alright, or account belum terima. It can be either me hutang to Jeffrey atau Jeffrey hutang kepada saya. So, it's either I owe him or he owe me. But here, the context in this bab 8B for the hutang lapo, hutang lapo terpule, and peruntukan hutang, hutang ragu is linked to the ABT. Account belum terima. So, what does account belum terima mean? It means that orang, the customer yang hutang kepada saya, Okay, no worries. I will give you an example now. So remember, there is hutang lapo. Okay, let's talk about hutang lapo first. All right. So hutang itu is a debt. Then what about lapo? Okay. So now let's say um Bob. Okay, Bob is a businessman. Bob um sells shoes. Or we say sells um anything like okay, shirts are okay. So shirts are always use shoe then a bit too normal. Okay, sell shirts. Okay, Bob when your business manjao baju. So Bob we always come to me and buy shirts because I produce a lot of shirts. I produce um, Nike, I produce Adidas. All right. So Bob will come to my factory and then he will buy a lot, a lot, a lot of shirts. Okay. At a cheap price. And then he will go and sell in his store. Are you guys following? If yes, you give me an F in the chat box if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, clear with the example, the scenario that I'm giving you. Okay, so, Mila. Okay, so Bob, so, shirt, so Bob, buy from me. Buy the shirt from me. Okay, meaning, in other words, Bob, ialah saya punya customer. Right now. Okay, and the payment that I use or the payment that I, I, I accept, okay, can be a, saya boleh menjual secara kredit. So, if you have menjual secara kredit, maksud, 
I have to. How do you record for your account journal? You have to debit and credit, right? So when I'm in job or negative secure credit, I will debit my account balloon terima and credit my jualan. Right not? This is what we have learned in bab 4 and bab 5. Right? When you menjual, when I draw barang secara credit, I debit my account belum terima and credit my jualan. Because Bob take shirts. Okay, Bob already taken the shirts from me. But Bob belum bayar lagi. Meaning, saya belum terima wang daripada Bob. Okay, I haven't terima. So that's why it's called account belum terima. So now the account belum terima is Bob. Let's say the amount you uh, 5,000 ringgit. Okay, debit, EBT, credit, jualan. So this is jualan credit because Simon Jal said your credit. Okay, up until now, boleh understand that? If yes, you give me a two in the chat box if you understand. Up to now, the, the picture, the story that I'm giving you. Okay, and also all this entry. So you know why I debit ABT, why I credit Jualan. All right, good. Okay, so you have to know that in the business, when we do trading, okay, I sell shirts and then next day I buy from other people and then I sell to other people, okay, because um, it is always, most of the time is on credit, okay, secara credit, like now I'm on just secara credit. So, when you enjoy the secure credit, there's a risk. Okay, what is the risk? The risk of the dapat kutip utang. Rana, do you think that if you Give out the all the you sell out all the uh, items, all the brown anger, so charity credit. Do you think that hundred percent of all will pay you back the money? Uh? Not necessary. Okay, even if you, you have a parents, okay, you ask your parents, uh either that you um pinjam wang to other orang lain, okay, to your kawan ke your your relative ke, right? So, if pinjam wang ke bada your friends or so on, it is not 100% guaranteed that they will pay you back the money. Kerana, some is, you don't have money, they say, oh, little, 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 until 10 years later, still haven't get back the money yet from them. Then you'll be like, ayah, takpelah, takpelah, suyi, ayah, ayah, kawan, ayah, you, you tutup satu mata, you buka another one. You don't care already. You know what I mean? So same thing in business. When you sell out the books, the credit, you haven't got the payment yet. Maybe the next day, they won't be able to pay me back. You know what I mean? So now, come back to this Bob. So Bob already taken 5,000 ringgit of the shirts, but Bob belum bayar lagi. Okay? So saya belum terima wang daripada Bob. So, I bagi dia satu bulan untuk menjelaskan hutang. Okay, I give Bob one month to clear the hutang. And one month later, Bob say he can't pay me. Okay? And then, slowly, because there's some uh, issue with the business, and then Bob cakap dia nak muflis. Oh, it's so there's one term that you might see later. Mufflis in English means bankrupt. I think it's a BM word, bankrupt. Okay, you know it's bankrupt, right? So you close down your business, you close down because you cannot pay back all the hutang, and then they sue you to court, and then you go to the court, and then the judge, okay, the judge say, the penghukum, right? Say, oh, uh, you have to uh, bankrupt lah. I declare you as bankrupt. Atau, unfortunately, 
Bob die in an accident. Dia uh, meninggal dunia. Atau dia lari diri. Okay, Bob run to Thailand. Okay, he don't want to come back again. So, maksudnya, once we get this kind of information, either dia move flees, dia lari diri, dia meninggal dunia, or apa-apa, all these reasons, okay, will lead to not able to pay back this 5,000. So, when we know this, and we know that Bob telah lari diri, when I call Bob, Bob doesn't pick up my call anymore, I know that, I know. This 5,000 ringgit, I cannot collect anymore. And I will see it as a hutang yang tilapo. And you can call it a hutang lapo. Are you guys clear? If yes, you give me a three in the chat box. So hutang lapo means, so in English, it is called a bad debt. Why bad? Because this debt, you cannot collect anymore. Ma. So it's bad na. All right, so if you want to record now, how do you record for this journal? Normally, after kita jual, I debit ABT, I credit jualan. So now when we know that this is a hutang yang telah dilapok, telah dihapus, so how do I record? I have to debit and credit. So I will debit into the hutang lapok and credit my ABT. I have to take it out. From my ABT and put it into hutang lapo or bad debt. All right. So a bad debt is something that is bad. So when you have this kind of hutang lapo, how do you feel? You feel bad. Why not? You feel a bit sad like what five thousand or oh. you with this five thousand, I can buy one iPhone fourteen already. Correct not? So you feel bad lah. So when you feel bad, you feel sad. So this is actually a hutang lapo is expenses, a belanja. You see the B, the belanja, belanja is bad. That's why with the B, bad. Can you see or not? And then if it's a belanja, maksudnya we have to record in our account untung rugi. This is what we learned. The belanja to untung rugi, the hasil to the untung rugi also. Are you guys clear? If yes, you give me a four in the chat box. So this is hutang lapo. And I already tell you where to record for this hutang lapo. Because if you said you feel bad, hutang lapo. Uh, belanja, belanja, account untung rugi. Alright? Okay. So that is your hutang lapo. Now, next one is your hutang lapo. But you have another term at the back, which is terpule. Okay, so we continue from the story just now. About this Bob. So, um, apparently this Bob, I mean, like, he really flew to Thailand. Lah. Like I said just now, ran to Thailand and hide himself up because there are many uh, hutang yang belum Jelas lagi, okay, included my 5,000 ringgit and also got other people like 10,000 from Abu, 50,000 from Ali, 200,000 from Najib, and so on. Okay, so lari diri dah. Okay, but I don't know, two years later, okay, two years later, suddenly so I received a phone call from an unknown phone. Okay, because when you don't save the people, a name on the, the contact on the phone, then you don't know who is he, uh, who, uh, who is this person calling, right? So you pick up and then you listen, lah, okay? You listen to this voice and um, it is a bit familiar, okay? Then this person say he's Bob, okay? You'll be like, yeah, hey, hello, uh, you Chin Wei, I'm Bob, okay? Then when you hear the Bob, of course, two years you haven't met Bob, ma, right? So definitely you try to recall who is this person? Who is this Bob? Good or not? So Bob, Bob, and then suddenly he talk about, hey, remember two years ago, I uh, I owe you 5,000 ringgit, saya hutang awak 5,000 ringgit. When you talk about money, you straight away remember, oh, 5,000 ringgit, my 5,000 ringgit. Even though it's two years ago, okay, the incidents have passed long time ago, but when you talk about money, who owe you money, you remember. 
Correct or not? So you remember who is this Bob, lah, right? So, and surprisingly, Bob say what? Bob say, okay, mm, actually I'm making this call to you is because I feel bad because um, I owe you 5,000 ringgit two years ago and now I went to Thailand and I already set up my own new business there and I decided to return back the two thousand, uh, sorry, the 5,000 ringgit to you. Wow. Okay? So, he, he decided to give back the 5,000 ringgit to me. So, is this a happy thing or a, a bad thing, a sad thing? Of course, suddenly you thought like it is a, a lost hope and now you got 5,000 ringgit out of nowhere, isn't it? So, when that happens, you feel happy. So, a happy the H, and this is a Asura. Make sense or not? If yes, you give me one number. Number five. If you're following and it makes sense to you and you understand, give me a five in the chat box. Okay? So you can see that it was a hutang lapok. It has to be a hutang lapok first. I, mean, I already recorded in my hutang lapok. But later, the person wants to pay me back the money. So it becomes a hutang lapok yang Terpule. Okay, so how do you record for this? So I definitely cannot go and debit and credit my ABD anymore because I already put it into my hutang lapo. So what I'm gonna do now is I have to because when suddenly he pay me back the money, the money comes in, so I have to debit my bank lah because money comes in lah. All right, and then credit. Is it a hutang lapo? I see. When you have a hutang lapo to pulley, you get back the money. What do you feel? You feel happy. And when you feel happy, it's a hasil. And based on your abalim, a hasil is in the credit set. Therefore, you have to credit your hutang lapo to pulley, HLT. If they're paying us 5,000, you put 5,000. All right. But if they're paying us like 3,000 only, then 3,000 lah. Okay, depending on how much they're paying back. So as you can see here, for your hutang lapo just now, I say it is a belanja because it's bad. So it is a belanja. A belanja in your abalim is in the debit side. Therefore, your hutang lapo is in the debit. Can you see the whole picture now? If yes, you give me a 6 in the chat box. You can see the whole picture for your hutang lapo and your hutang lapo terpule. You give me a six. All right, it has to be linked in your head. Okay, so lastly will be your hutang lapo. You know your hutang ragu to peruntukan hutang ragu. All right, so up until there, the story with the Bob is closing already. It's closed. Okay, the end already. Because the happy ending at the end is what? You receive back the money. Ma. Right, so that is a very good ending. Okay, so now, this number three one, the Pauntukan Hunargu is a bit different because of this word Pauntukan. A Pauntukan is something like an estimate. You know what estimate, right? Estimate means tak, tak cun punya, okay? Tak accurate punya. It's just maybe plus one, minus one, okay? It, maybe 50 minutes, okay? Estimate around 50 minutes, I will arrive. But then, is it like accurately 50 minutes you arrive at the place? Maybe can be 45 minutes, maybe can be 55 or one hour, okay? But estimate around 50 minutes, I will arrive. So that is estimate, a peruntukan. Or in BM, is something like a anggaran. Okay? You are not sure, but you estimate. So normally, all this estimate will be based on a percentage. Okay? So, hutang, hutang lah. Alright, so peruntukan, hutang ragu, the concept is like this. 
All right. So since we know that usually we will not be able to collect all the money, all the ABT from the ABT. Okay. So and in a, as an accountant, we want to be prudent. In BM, I don't know what they call it, but in English, we call it a prudent. Prudent means we always want to give the best, um, the best representation. We don't want to over, over present it. Okay, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Huh? All right. So, um, yeah, let's talk about Mark. Okay, you're great. Uh, let's say exam, all right? Okay, so now, when we talk about estimate, okay, so like exam, sometimes the, the school will say target. Okay, what is your target? What is your, what have you achieved? Okay, like now. Okay, so um, let's say we are talking about subject account. Okay, so now you know, the latest mark that you got from account is um, 68 marks. Okay, so now, the teacher asks you, okay, now, guys, what is the target for your SPM? Okay, for subject account. So now, we have to estimate. Okay, you give a target, man, you give a, a estimate. You don't know, man, what is the future uh, grade or uh, mark for your SPM. But then, as a student, we have to be prudent. We cannot be like, Oh yeah, I target 100, I will get 100 lah. Okay, 100 lah. Can we do that? You cannot lah. Okay? Of course, we have to reassess ourselves. Okay? Based on like, are you hardworking enough? Do you have enough time to prepare? Are you going to do enough exercises? So you think, you think, you think, reason. And then you think, um, I think the best that I can get is um 90. Okay, or 85, around there. But then, I need to be prudent a bit, you know, so that um, I don't uh, overstate the mark or the target mark. So, I make it maybe around 83, which is very achievable because I think I can get 85, mark, right? But then, I make it, um, not too high or not too low, but there. You get what I mean? So this is prudent. So same thing. So when you're estimating this, uh, but when to go is saying what? Meaning there's a lot of hutang, as I said just now. Okay. So it's not 100% of hutang that kita boleh dapat, kita boleh terima. Okay. So we will put a percentage there. So maybe 4%. So every year, 4% of this hutang will masuk into PHR. Maksudnya, we already put in our heart, we already prepared, we are ready to accept the fact that there is 4% of account belum terima yang kita tak boleh terima. Okay? You have to get ready so that like later you will not get a lot of hutang lapok lah. Alright? Because we already put into the PHR. Just a uh, um, like a backup plan, like an estimate, so that we can see, oh, so next year, maybe we won't get too much of money because we already factored in the PHR. All right? So if you go back to the nota here, they are really giving you like some of the, the definitions. So you can see the Hudan Lapo already said, okay, this is a belanja. So belanja, you go to the account don't regi. And what is Hudan Lapo? Hudan Lapo, yeah, Lapo, yeah, Lapo, yeah, Lapo, yeah, Okay, that's about the ABT. So I already given you the reason, tidak mampu to buy hutang, hilangkan diri, meninggal dunia, worthless, bankrupt. All right. So now for the Hudan Lapo, terpule is a hasil because it is it's a happy thing to have a Hudan Lapo, terpule. So if it's a hasil, account don't regi juga. 
Okay. So, hutang yang pada awalnya telah dihapus, kira, can you see or not? Like, hutang lapok. Like, like the story of Bob. Okay. Dan telah direkod sebagai hutang lapok. I already recorded it as hutang lapok. Tetapi, but, dapat dijelaskan semula. Okay, later. You know I mean? So, now, the last one is this PHR. Tepuk untukkan hutang ragu. And it is actually a catatan contra of your ABT. And later you see why. And therefore, it will record in the PKK. Alright? So, it is an anggaran hutang yang tidak dapat. So, I told you it's an estimate. Anggaran. Alright? And here is the formula. So, how do you get a PHR? You use your ABT bersih times your kada PHR. So, this one, the exam will give. Okay, the question will give you the percentage. So, you just times with your ABT bersih and then you get your PHR. Alright? So, and how do we get this ABT bersih? What do you mean by ABT bersih? ABT bersih means your ABT tolak your hutang lapo. If there is a hutang lapo, we have to minus up from our ABT. Okay, later I will show the example. So, let's skip this part first. Let's go to question one. A. Question 1A, we have to do general arm. Alright, so whenever we do general arm, so now we have to do the table, alright. So the journal arm. Um, tarik. You run. Copy. Credit. Okay, so let's read. For the first January 2020, okay, bagi awal, bagi ABT Oxford Enterprise ialah 8,200 ringgit. For the 31st December 2020, okay, so this is 1st January, this is 31st December, you end. BG telah berhutang kepada Oxford Enterprise sebanyak 1,200 ringgit. And Oxford Enterprise mendapati BG telah menghilangkan diri dan hutangnya telah dihapuskan sebagai hutang lapuk. So, how do we record for this hutang lapuk? So, it's telling us that in the 1st January 2020, in the beginning, Oxford Enterprise have this ABT of uh, 8,200 ringgit. Okay? But the 31st December 2020, Biggie telah berhutang kepada um, Oxford 1,200 ringgit. And this Biggie telah menghilangkan diri and the hutangnya telah dihapus sebagai hutang lapuk. And so, how do we record for this? So, very simple. In your journal arm. So now we just record the pelarasan. Just like what we have done in the uh, the account nominal. Alright. So we get Malaysia, we get Malaysia. So December 31st. So there is a hutang lapuk. So I told you when there is hutang lapuk, hutang lapuk means it is a belanja. Okay. Because it's bad. A belanja means belanja. You have to debit. Okay, so here you debit hutang, lapo. Then, who is this? Account, belum terima PG. So, ABTP, right? 1,200, 1,200. So what is this? Record gun. Hutang lapo.
All right? So this is your genome. So always you look at what is the polarization we have to do and then see whether we debit it or credit it. All right? So if we debit Hudang Lampo, then we have to credit another one would be the ABT because we have to take out from this uh, ABT BG. Okay, now go to B. So how do we record for this um, ABTBG then account hutang labo? All right, so account T. Account balloon terima ABT. So, dia cakap pada 31st December, okay, dia perhutang kepada 1200 And ABT is on the debit side, my right? So, here you can just put, because it is asset. So, the baki BB will be on the debit side. So, December, just put December 31st, right? So, baki BB, um, 1200 Okay, so this is the baki yang ada. Okay? But now there is a hutang lapo. All right, so we have to take out this thousand two hundred because dia sudah hilangkan DV. All right, so I have to book another account called account hutang lapo. So if we take out, meaning I have to create my ABT. All right, so December thirty first. Here, put your input to the hutang lapo, 1200. So I credit ABT, I debit my hutang lapo. Account, balloon, terima. So this one closer, close case. If this is a Larry DV, then I I cannot uh, collect money from him anymore. So it is it doesn't make sense to uh, leave it open. So we have to close that. So close means should we close means uh, double line in here on the bottom. Okay, and this hutang lapo, we will send it to the account hutang rugi. All right, because I told you my hutang lapo, send to account hutang rugi lah, because it is a belanja. 's it All right so this is how you record for this one so you can see I debit hutang lapo All right hutang lapo debit side and credit my abt so you can see that I credit abt here with the hutang lapo All right so that is question one. I guess okay with question one. If yes, you give me a one in the chat box just to double confirm. That's okay with question one. All right. Okay. Now we go to question two. Two A. So two, pada the first December 2021, Bigi yang telah menghilangkan diri membayar hutangnya sebanyak 1,000 ringgit kepada Oxford Enterprise. So what he's saying is, um, Bigi telah hilangkan diri. Tapi 
Oh, this the December dia telah bayar hutangnya sebanyak thousand kepada back to Oxford. Okay, Oxford. So now how to record this? One? So this is a hutang lapuk yang terpulih because kita telah record dalam hutang lapuk. Dan sekarang dia cakap dia bayar balik. So record dalam jenis arm. Okay, so you write jenis arm throughout the table. Put the tarik butilan debit credit. Okay. So, December 31st. Okay. So, but now it's 2021. Lah. Okay. okay. So, I told you, uh, this is a hutang lapu terpuli. H-L-T, hutang lapu terpuli. And hutang lapu terpuli is H. Oh, cannot. Okay, this one cannot. Okay. Because hutang lapu terpuli is a. Uh, Happy thing, you suddenly get money from this biggie. So if it's a happy thing, it means it's a hassle. And if it's a hassle, then hassle will be on the credit side. All right. So you have to credit your foot on the foot of the All right. So if you credit your foot on the foot of the the other account. So here's it when you when the biggie yang hilang diri membayar hutang sebanyak 1000 kepada Oxford we are the Oxford now right so if biggie bayar maksudnya kita yang terima so money comes in therefore we have to debit our bank um 1000 so here you just say the record kan Hutang lapuk terpulih. Alright, so this is how you record for hutang lapuk terpulih. Debit bank, credit hutang lapuk terpulih. You don't have to link back to your ABT. Why? Because you see, my ABT already closed case. There is no more ABT DG. Therefore, I cannot go and debit my ABT or credit my ABT. Alright? So what we're going to do now is just, we just throw into the hutang lapu terpulih and then I get money, so I have to debit my bank. Alright, so you book an account. So now you have to book an account bank and book an account hutang lapu terpulih. So, uh, open your account now. Bank. So they tell you that the account bank be near Baki but the thirty first number twenty twenty one is uh then you treat out Zinla, right? And Baki for bank bank is an asset, so the Baki will be on the debit side. Lah. Okay, December 31st. Um, Baki DB is 3,000. Okay, so you get in 3,000, and then you terima 1,000 ringgit, so you debit bank again. Here, from where? From hutang lapo terpulih. So, 1,000. Okay, so I mentioned hutang lapo terpulih. Therefore, in my account, hutang Lapo terpuli. Here, I debit my bank, so I have to credit my hutang lapo terpuli. Can you see it? I debit bank, credit hutang lapo terpuli. Debit bank, credit hutang lapo terpuli. First, here you write bank lah. 1,000. 
All right? So after that, you can close up. So for account bank, one line double line, you jump on 24,000, 24,000. So there will be a Bucky HP and BB. Lah. HB, then BB. Twenty-four thousand. Okay, so this one going up to here. Or who don't put the pulley is a hash seal, so we can send it to the account only. Da 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 da. That is for your number two. Okay, I guess okay with question two. If yes, type two in the chat box. You're okay with two. All right, so this is number two. Okay, so now let's move on to question three. Okay, so this question three, there's three, one, three, Roman two, and three, Roman three. Okay, because uh, this is a bit special where uh, there's a continuous of question. Lah. Okay, now, let's look at three, one first. Get this one done. Huh? If not done, then you can take photo later. You finish it up because uh, we're running out of time. So we must finish this first. Okay, three one. Bucky account belum terima penyegahan Jordan pada akhir tempoh per account yang terdapat di nombor 2018 jelah 36,000. Meaning this 36,000 is the ABT. Correct lah. We read the sentence. Okay, next. Penyegahan Jordan telah memutuskan untuk mewujudkan Peruntukan hutang ragu sebanyak 4%. Can you see it? So they are telling us that they are estimating uh, to make a decision to have a PHR of 4% atas ABT bersih. What is the formula for ABT bersih? ABT bersih is ABT tolak hutang lapuk. And do we have hutang lapuk here? The answer is no. Is it not? We don't have hutang lapuk. So we can show we use 36,000 times what four percent that will be how much six thousand times four percent you get thousand four hundred and forty so this thousand four hundred and forty will be your per untukan hutang ragu okay and let me give you another information is that this is their first time can you see telah memutus untuk memuju so they just decided to start to have this 4% of PHR. Before this, is they don't have this PHR. But now they just started. So this is a new thing. All right? So when this is a new thing, how do you record for this one? Okay, so 3A. So first, you have to arm. So you do, uh, draw the box. This is um, 2021. Eh, no, 2018. Okay. So, this, because this is a new one, therefore you can see that in this table, this thing means a new. Let's focus on this one. So, when it is a new PHR, what we're going to do is we have to debit hutang ragu and credit PHR. Debit 
utang lagu. This is very important, ah. Credit. PHR. That's why here I say put utang ragu when it is new. And if next year they bertambah, then you put a pertambahan. You debit to pertambahan. So meaning here debit, pertambahan, tambahan PHR, and then you credit your PHR. And if this year, the last year, if dia kurang, can you see not pengurang? I will show you what it means to bertambah and kurang, okay? But for this one, if kurang, you have to debit PHR, different lah, and then credit your pengurangan PHR. Yeah, so come back to this question. Okay, so this is a new one. Therefore, I say it is a new one. So I debit my hutang ragu. Because it's an entry, ma. you have to debit and credit. So I have to credit my PHR. Then what is the thing that I have to debit? You cannot debit to your ABT or whatever. You have to debit your hutang ragu. So here, December 31st, you write hutang ragu. And then you credit your peruntukan Hutang ragu. Okay, yeah. different ah. One is hutang ragu. One is peruntukan hutang ragu. Okay, how much? I recalculated. 1,440. Right, how do you get that? You want to get this figure, you use 36,000 times 4%. So this is how you get this answer. 1,440. Right, so here you just write, write my record gun hutang ragu. And then if you open your account, account hutang ragu. Twenty eighteen, twenty eighteen. Okay, so I debit my hutang ragu. So this hutang ragu is actually a belanja, right? So think ah, if you estimate, you estimate that oh yo, there's about one thousand five hundred forty yang maybe cannot tapat, yang tap yang tak boleh dikutipkan. Even though you estimate, but you feel bad already. So this is a belanja. So this hutang ragu, you go to the accountant rugi because it's a belanja. Manakala your this PHR penguntungan hutang ragu, I said it is a contract of AB, therefore it will be in the PKK. All right. Later you understand why. But now for now you just know that this is a debit because it's a belanja. This is on the credit because it will go into the liability or not really a liability but a contract. So you credit it. Okay. So here you debit um December. The first peruntukan hutang ragu 1440. So I already debit my hutang ragu. I have to credit this uh, peruntukan hutang ragu lah. Account peruntukan hutang ragu so here i debit here i credit hutang ragu 1040 okay so after that you close So this one, I told you this is a belanja, go to account only. Okay, so 
December 31st. But for this, penguntungan hudang ragu, because this will be recorded in the PKK, and if you know, in all the PKA one, they don't put it into account rugi or you debit to the PKK or whatever. It just straight away HP and DD. There's a HB, there will be a BB. Lah. Bucky BB, 1,540. Okay. All right. So this is how you record for this first part. Okay, this is actually a continue question. Huh? That's why two. Okay, but this one, when you firstly record a new PHR, this is how you record. You debit, who don't ragu, credit PHR. Now, we go to trade Roman number two. Yeah, Roman one. Okay, Roman two. Pada tahun 2019, okay, next year, penegang Jordan, you see, it's the same thing, bersetuju untuk menyelaraskan kadar penguntukan hunan ragu yang baru kepada 6% setahun atas ABT and bagi akaun belum terima pada 31st December 2019, ialah 49,000. So now, a new one. So now they use 49,000 ABT. We don't have hunan lapor, so we don't have to minus out times 6%. This is your rate. So 49,000 times 6% is 2,940. Okay, see ya. Uh, this year is 2,940, the PHR. This is the PHR. But what is the PHR from last year for 2018? It's just 1,440. Meaning, Last year, 2018, I estimate 1440. But this is 2019, the estimate become 2940, meaning lebih banyak hutang yang tidak boleh dikutip. So if that's the case, is it a bad thing or a good thing? Definitely, it's a bad thing because more hutang you dapat dikutip. So if it's a bad thing, this is a belanja. And what do we write for this? Can you say not? From here, 1440, dia naik, dia bertambah to 2940. That's why this one, we call it a pertambahan, apa? This is a PHR. So it is called pertambahan PHR. How much? It goes to 2940 minus 1440. And you get 2940 minus 1440, you get 1500. You see how I get this 1500? So you are using the new one, the new PHR, minus the old PHR. The old PHR meaning you're referring to this, the last year one. Okay, so how do you record this? So this is a Pertama PHR. You feel bad? Because, so it's a Belanger. So in your journal arm, In your journal arm. See ya? So now it's 2019. Huh? Okay. So if there's a belanja, a pertambahan is a belanja, so I have to debit my pertambahan, PHR. Pertambahan peruntukan utang ragu, PHR. How much? I already calculated. Lah. So how do I calculate this one? I just use... um. My 2,940 minus 1,440. And I get this uh, figure, 1,500. And I have to credit, always credit, uh, I mean, credit or debit to the other account must be a point to count hutang Okay, that's So what is this? Kita merekodkan 
peruntukan hutang. Ah oh, sorry. Uh, per tambahan peruntukan hutang ragu. Is that the difference? You know, so if it is the first time, a new one, then you debit hutang ragu. Okay? And then you credit PSR. And then if the next year, you see that there's a pertambahan PSR, so a pertambahan is a belanja, so you debit pertambahan and credit PSR. Alright? And how do we record for this thing? So, very simple. So, you put your ledger. Okay, so we don't have hutang ragu now ah, because now is no longer the first year. Okay, so pertambahan peruntukan hutang ragu. So this is in 2019, 2019. Okay, so here I debit my right. So I debit December 31st. Here are to the put Pontukan Hutang Ragu uh, 1500. I got an it. Okay. So for your Pontukan Hutang Ragu, remember we got Baki BB. Ah. Don't forget. You got Baki BB here. Can you refer back? Okay, so 2019, January 1st, we got Baki BB. So January 1st, Baki BB is 1,440. Right, and now I debit my pertambahan and credit my PSR. So here, there is a pertambahan. Peruntukan. I just write PHR, ah, okay, because it will be very long if I put the whole thing. But in exam, make sure you write the full sentence. Pertambahan peruntukan hutang ragu like this one. Okay, so how much is that? 1,500 ringgit. Okay, so from there, okay, so if you want to do to, to this one, 2940. So this one will be 2940 as well. So you can see that, you see, this 2940 is the 2940 that we got. And this one will be the Baki HP. Lah. So you continue to bring down to next year. Lah. You see it? HB, BB. So now this one you bring down to 2020, January 1st. 2940, HPBB. So 2940 is the new uh, PHR that we calculated for 2019. And for this one, pertambahan, peruntukan hutan ragu is a belanja you send to your account untung rugi. 1500. December 31st. Okay, last, last, last. Okay, number three. So, pada tahun 2020, perniagaan Jordan menetapkan kadar peruntukan hudang uh, ragu 6% setahun atas ABT bersih. Then, the bucket for ABT is 32,000. So, same thing, we calculate 32,000 times 6%. Because how much for this year, 2020? 32,000 times 6%. We get 1920 and we have to compare with last year. You don't compare to 2018, huh? only last year. So 2020 punya last year is 2019. So the PSI is how much? 2940. So from 2940 to this year punya 1920, is it up or down? The answer is going down. Down means what? Pengurangan. So it is a pengurangan PHR kurang berapa? So it just minus lah. You use 2940 minus 
So how much do you got? 2940 minus 1920, you will get 1020. So your when your pH are kurang, meaning your hutang yang tidak dapat dikutip akan berkurang juga. So if your hutang tidak dapat dikutip kurang, maksudnya hutang yang dapat dikutip akan bertambah. So you can collect more hutang. You can collect more money. So if you can collect more money, if you're happy, happy means this is a ha seal. That's why it comes from this table. Isn't it? So if up, pertambahan PHR, it is a belanja. If there's a down, it's a pengurangan PHR, it is a ha seal. Both belanja and ha seal go into your account untung rugi. So quickly, let's record for this one, then we will leave. All right? So three. Journal. Um, 2020. Okay, so here, December 31st. So, what do we debit up? So, remember, I told you this is a pengurangan PHR. So, a pengurangan is a hasil. So, a hasil definitely you have to credit it. Therefore, I credit my pengurangan. Peruntukan hutang ragu. So if I create pengurangan, I will have to debit this one. Peruntukan hutang ragu. So how much? It is um one nine two zero. Did I get this? You just use two nine four zero minus one. Nine two zero. Sorry, it should be one zero two zero, right? One zero two zero. Okay, we you don't want the last page. Uh, I want the difference. Kurang berapa? One zero two zero. Okay, so the same uh, record gun. Pengurangan peruntukan hutang ragu. Okay, then last the ledger. So how do you record for this ledger? So I need to change this to pengurangan peruntukan hutang ragu. D20, 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 and for the point of PHR punya baki ialah berapa ah? So you look back lah, 2020 baki BB for your point of hundang ragu is 2940. Okay. Okay, so for your pengurangan PHR, it is a credit because it's a hasil. So you credit here. December 31st, and here the put you on write the other account name, which is the Pongu Tukang Hutang Ragu of 1020. So if I credit my pengurangan, I have to debit my PHR. December 31st, and you write the pengurangan PHR here, Pongu Tukang Hutang Ragu. How much? 1020. So now, you put this figure right. So now I have to close it. Which side is bigger? 2940. So same thing. So you put 2940 here. And then this empty space will be 2940 minus 1020. And for PHR, you put Baki HP. So when there's a HP, there will be a BB. So this one will bring to the next year. All right. Same thing. PB. This one, uh, one, nine, 
1920. And this 1920 is the exact PHR that we calculated using the formula 32,000 times the 6%. We get 1920. 1920. Is it? So it's the same thing. All right. And here you close 1020. And this one is a pengurangan, is a hasil. You go to your account or don't look it. Yeah, that's it. So this is how you record for these three different things. So first, hutang ragu, if it is the first time. Second, you have to see, is it up or down? If up, is a pertambahan piyasha. If it is a down, this is a pengurangan PHR. So I give you a three different scenario here. And this one I summarize in a table. Is it? So I say a new PHR and old PHR. What is Berbizan? 100. So the first line, there is no old PHR. You record into a hudang ragu. And in 2020, if your new PHR, you see, go up already. Go up how much? 100. So the 100 of Berbizan is in the pertambahan PSHA. And 2021, same thing. Like you go down to 50, then you minus 150 is the perbezaan. Then there is a pengurangan PSHA. Are you guys clear? If yes, you give me a C in the chat box, please. If you are clear, you give me a C. All right. So now, I will give you a homework. Then, you boleh balik dah. Okay, you can leave this meeting after I give you the homework. All right, so the homework is page 179, you do question 39. Okay, and then go to page 193, you do question 8 and question nine and then lastly go to page 194 194 and do question 12 yeah question 12 to do okay so these are the four questions that you have to do today. All right. So if I note it down and you complete all this thing, then you may leave and I will see you in the next class. All right. So goodbye. Make sure you do all this homework. Huh?